Hello everyone. So today I'm here to share a tip with you, which is about reinforcement of badly mutilated teeth in a very simple, economical and effective way. So let's see how it's to be done. So this is about reinforcement and pre and buildup of grossly mutilated teeth. We all know the importance of having all the four walls while doing the root canal treatment. So if one or more than one of the wall is missing, we do pre and buildup, right? So this is done either with a direct composite restoration or even with temporary materials like maybe a glass enamel or even with a uh, liquid amp. If you want to see about detailed pre and buildup with a composite, then I have a YouTube video with the name pre and buildup and access cavity. So you can watch that to know step-by-step -step procedure. Now here, nowadays, we prefer more of uh, liquid amp this way because we are more into single visit root canal treatments wherein we do cleaning and shaping both in the same visit. So we don't want to waste much of time on pre and buildup. So we complete the procedure and then we do the even the post endo restoration also in the same visit. But whereas if we have a grossly mutilated teeth like this kind where more than one wall is missing and even when the DK is subsensible. So in these cases, it is really a difficult task, a challenging task to do a pre endo buildup. And not just a pre endo buildup, even reinforcement of the tooth is equally important because in such a clinical situation, most of the times the patient reports with uh, intraoral abscess and even periapical lesions. So when the patient is coming with this clinical scenario, most of the times we may need to do multi-visit root canal treatment where we need to do even intracanal medicament. So we don't want the tooth to fracture during this time. So we need to do even the reinforcement also. So even the subgingival DK when it is there, and when the root caries is there, in all these cases, when we do a pre endo buildup, it is not only going to reinforce a tooth structure while rubber dam isolation and during the treatment phase, but also it will provide a four wall so that we have a reservoir for our irrigants to act. And we have clinical reference point, the standard reference points we have for our working length determination and to maintain that same working length. And at the same time, uh, for our irrigants to work effectively and even our intracanal medicament to be effective within the canal without having any leakage or seepage. So it is very important to do the pre endo buildup and reinforcement even in uh, grossly mutilated teeth. So let's see here, different types of clinical scenarios I'm going to discuss with clinical tips. So here we have a uh, canine where a badly decayed tooth is present. And here after the caries excavation, and uh, see, in such uh, clinical situations, when there is a DK, most of the times, even the access cavity also gets opened on its own. And here, uh, first we feel the canal and we don't do the complete cleaning and shaping, but then only the coronal orifice three to four millimeters we enlarge, like maybe Protepa Gold SX5. And thereafter, we do the etching and then the bonding protocols and then uh, place a matrix band also. And here in the three to four millimeter area where we have done the enlargement, in this we place a gutta pacha, the greater taper gutta pacha, maybe a 6% or maybe even a non standardized gutta pacha. And if it is able to uh, close the orifice completely, it's fine. But if there are spaces, because the canals are not round always, right? So if there are spaces on the sides, then you wrap it with a Teflon tape, which is available in the market, which is also known as a common Levanda with a plumber tape. This is very useful in the routine dentistry. We can even sterilize it, autoclave it. So here, this is wrapped around the GP and then place it so that all the orifice is completely sealed. Now we can go ahead with the composite restoration. And this is how thereafter, just you know, do the lateral movements and then pull it out. So the GP is out along with the Teflon and now we have a patent canal and then the orifice where we can do the working length. And now we have even a standard reference point also for our working length. 
and that's how we have completed the single visit root canal treatment in this case this case uh, the working length was almost 31 millimeters and thereafter we get the appointment for the post and pore but then the patient did not turn up because of the corona times and he came after two years and the tooth was preserved well preserved because we reinforce the tooth in the beginning itself otherwise maybe the tooth would have fractured or maybe there would have been a leakage if i would not have done the this pre endo build up with the permanent restorative material so after 2 years we have done the post and core and uh, since the person doesn't want to go for uh, like you know crown lengthening and uh, thereafter getting a ferrule for the crown so we left it as it is with the post endo direct restoration now coming to the second scenario wherein uh, this kind of cases are very common in our clinical practice where there is a class 5 cavity which is extending subgingival and even a root caries is there so in this case the patient already lost two molars so did not want to go for the extraction so i did a caries excavation and uh, quick temporary restoration i did because i was suspecting something fishy over here so a quick temporary restoration isolated and then searching for the canals but then i could not trace the mb canal so again removed the isolation removed the temporary cement also and did a uh, deep margin exposition with the laser and thereafter got the canal orifice can you see where it is it's on the root extreme onto the external surface of the root so in this case if we do a routine a normal pre endo build up definitely we are going to block the orifice that will be like you know very difficult thing so in such cases here the technique is that uh, the same way once you feel the canal just do the little bit of scouting of the orifices maybe with 15 and 20 number files and thereafter only the orifice enlargement we do with the sx file and uh, thereafter uh, you place a suitable greater taper gutta percha and seal that orifice of 3 to 4 mm and the remaining canals if you are not doing the same canal projection technique then just uh, place a teflon tape on top of the orifices so that you know our restorative material will not go and then block those orifices and same thing h and n bonding and here i did a free hand composite in this you can see this is from the occlusal surface and thereafter just remove the gutta percha and that is where the mesobuccal orifice was and then the cleaning and shaping was done through this and we had all the four walls you see this is again the patient reported with the intraoral abscess periapical lesion was present so we had to do intracanal medicament also in this case so in this multi visit the tooth was reinforced and there was no leakage coronal leakage because we placed a direct restoration permanent restoration over there and we had four walls for our irrigant to be active also and thereafter we went ahead with the obturation this is how the obturation was now coming to the another clinical situation again there is a class 5 cavity with deep subgingival decay in such cases doing a pre endo build up is like even if you are using a liquid dam also blocking the canals is unavoidable so to avoid such and at the same time we need to uh, build up the wall so that our irrigant is active inside the canals almost 35% of the canal walls are not touched with the uh, our shapers instrument so we need to have irrigant inside the canals so in this again with the laser the deep margin exposition was done and thereafter uh, only the same way orifice was enlarged because already when you are doing the caries excavation itself the canal gets open right so here only that orifice area was enlarged uh, keeping the patency and thereafter the paper point was etched and bonding application was done and thereafter the paper point was wrapped with the teflon tape and then it is placed inside the canal you can see in the second picture now we have blocked the orifices completely so that our restorative material is not going to go inside and then the direct composite restoration was done the third picture then the fourth picture the single visit uh, cleaning and shaping and then the obturation was completed then thereafter on the top access cavity the temporary seal was done and after one week the patient was called the last picture the access cavity was sealed with a direct composite and the gingiva is healing which you can see here now after 2 years the patient came for the other treatments like for the 
and for the five uh, second premolar and the first molar. So here you can see that the healed gingiva and the direct restoration is intact. So in a nutshell, whenever you see such cases, if the rubber dam isolation is possible, go ahead with it. Like maybe you can use the brinker clamps with the tissue retraction and the tiger clamps, but always make sure that we are not damaging further or we are not fracturing the remaining tooth structure because when the tooth structure is very thin, very little is remaining, we try to place a clamp and then we should not break the remaining tooth structure. If that is not happening, then only go ahead with the rubber dam isolation. And thereafter, most of the time, such deep caries require deep margin exposition. That is the gingivectomy uh, you need to do or gingivoplasty. Then after that isolation of the margins with the Teflon tape or with the retraction pod, then complete caries excavation. Whatever the subgingiva was there, now we have exposed it. So now we do the complete caries excavation. Then once the orifice is found, scouting of the orifice with 15, 20 number files, and orifice enlargement only up to three to four millimeters and matrix band adaptation. So in this, we have to see various bands which is fitting over there. Uh, maybe tofilmir, if not, if you have a real matrix or matrix in matrix, a double matrix system or ortho band, if it is possible, then do the matrix band adaptation and etching and then the bonding protocols followed by now, since we have enlarged that orifice area, we place a greater taper GP and see that if orifices are blocked completely, it's fine. Otherwise, wrap a Teflon tape around it, or even uh, as I showed, the paper point can be wrapped with the Teflon tape and place it in that orifice area. Now, remember, we have not done the complete cleaning and shaping. So the gatapacha inside the orifice is going to be really long. So it, because it's not going completely inside. So it may interfere with your working. So you can cut the gatapacha so that you have only three to four millimeters projecting out of the orifice. So you have a good working space there. Then if other orifices, we are not doing this canal projection technique. If you're doing for all the canals, then you can just place the same gata pacha and then go ahead with the same procedure. But if you're doing for only one, two canals this way and the other side tooth structure is normal, then protect those orifices with the Teflon tape covering on them and then the composite buildup. So thereafter, pull out the GP slide with lateral movements. And then if you have not done the rubber dam isolation before, do the rubber dam isolation now and continue with now the working length, cleaning and shaping and either obturation or with the intracanal medicament, depending on whatever the clinical case demands. So I hope this tip is useful for you and thank you for your patient care.